Jaguar Basketball Show with Coach Roman Banks, bringing you all the exciting action of the Southern University basketball program. Coach, um, welcome to the 2014 basketball season. Uh, you, got, you guys got a tough start. You had a couple of games uh, that you got beat by Division I schools, and uh, you know, but you played Marquette to about six points, which was a really, really good, it was a win for the Jaguars, <laughs> even though it was a loss. Uh, talk to us, Coach, about what you see for this team and why you play those tough teams, those D1 teams, in prep for this season. Well, you know, it, it's a two-fold question. First of all, you know, uh, our basketball program has to generate a dollar value for the university to help, you know, um, for our athletic department expenditures. And then the second fold is that um, I like playing those games to give our program and our guys a look at the next level uh, because we want to move our program to another level. And so oftentimes when we go there, we have, they have the practice gyms and they have the nice area lounge areas and different things for their players. And so a lot of times we look at all that, we tour those facilities, and at the end of the day, we play a good brand of basketball that we can stay in the game with those guys. And so I tell them all the time, it's fine for us to want to grow our program and have different things, but the bottom line is come to play the games. And if you can play out there on that court, it's the same everywhere I go, then you stand a chance to win. Coach, this year you're coming off the SWAC championship a good close loss to Gonzaga in the NCAA tournament. Talk to us about what it takes to motivate your team. I know it's not the same team from last year. Got a couple of guys that are holdovers. Well, you know, when you have good players and players that want to win, uh, it's not that much motivation as it is to getting them organized as a team and working in unison to be one out there on the court. Uh, I think this group of guys or in spirits group of guys, but they're a talent group of guys. And sometimes you just, if you haven't been there before, you really don't know. So it's taken, I think it takes this group a little longer to develop. But I think at the end of the day that they have a chance to have they, they number wins and have their chance to play for championships also. And, uh, you know, also uh, last year team put a lot of pressure on this team. People, you know, know who we are now. Right. And we're just not showing up and playing. They doing a scouting report for us. So, uh, last year team, uh, and, and that's welcome when you're trying to build your program because you will traditionally want to be good every year. Coach, Malcolm Miller, preseason player of the year. Uh, Yondarius Johnson, a proven commodity. The rest of the Jaguars are new or they are trying to establish themselves. Talk to us about some of the players on the 2014 team. Well, no question about it. I think uh, Kevin Goffney, um, a transfer in from Howard Junior College, would probably be uh, one of our most talented players. Uh, I think that he could be the heartbeat of this team. He's a tough guy, which I love toughness. Uh, uh, but he has to learn the game, learn the system. And um, in our individual workouts and practices, he's getting better. And then, you know, uh, we signed um, Traylon Banks from Scotlandville, who's come in and playing well for us when we went to Canada on our tour, uh, that we think that we need to jail because he can create, create up our other opportunities for other players. And then you also have Trey Lynch, who transferred in from Lamar, set out last season, haven't played in three semesters. Uh, I think that we need to get him ready, game prep, and get his mind uh, ready for organized basketball. And I think he can contribute a whole lot. And then Christopher Heider, who played some last year, I think that he could be the mainstay and a study plus for our basketball team at the point guard as well. Okay, Sounds like you got a good squad. Coach, last question, and we'll wrap this up. The SWAC conference, um, you were picked number two uh, uh, in the preseason to finish number two. What do you see for the conference? And um, are you, two, two-fold question, are you happy about the move to the tournament to Houston? Uh, I think that's a great location. You know, you want to play in an NBA arena when you have opportunity and brand your tournament. And then I think Houston is a great location where you can fly in and all people can get there pretty easily. And, uh, you know, I just hope the Jazz was there on the last day. All right. Talk to us about the, the conference itself. Who do you see uh, being in the final four of the, the race? It's a tough question. I don't want to put nobody down, but obviously Texas Southern uh, has a very good basketball team. A Mike very, Davis got them playing. Mike Davis come in, a very talented group. You know, they was able to get a kid 
uh, the transfer in from West Virginia, about 6'11", that, that was predicted to be a pro coming out of high school. Uh, he's a very good kid, and with all the players that they have returning off that team last year. And then you look at uh, Prairie View, who we beat in the, in the finals of the conference tournament last year. They got a good number of guys returning, had a good recruiting class, and uh, that's starting to be a pretty good rivalry for us as well. And then you look down the street at Jackson State, um, new coach Wayne Brent, who once coached at Ole Miss as assistant, was a very good high school coach there from Callaway High School, um, who is doing a good job with that basketball program. And then you got A&M, who returns everyone. Uh, they didn't lose a player from last year. And, uh, you know, they played, played pretty good the first round of the conference tournament as well. And then I think you also have to be, con you have to be concerned whenever you go on that Pine Bluff and Mississippi Valley swing. Uh, both of those teams have unique buildings. Fans are right on you. And if you're not ready to play there, uh, you can get beat there. Coach, tonight you beat Gremlin by 20. Monday night, Jackson State comes in. Uh, again, traditional rivals for Southern. Uh, good win tonight. Uh, good win tonight. Anytime you can beat Gremlin in anything at Southern University is great. Absolutely. And then uh, Jackson State is a very good basketball team. They come in with one of the best preseason records. Um, they've been playing very good. They played Memphis to the Y. They're a much different team than they were last year. Uh, Wayne Brennan is doing a good job. They have some guys. I think that they play more control. They'll actually attack you on the inside. They'll press you a little bit, play a zone. They try to confuse you um, offensively. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to playing this game. It's going to tell a lot about our basketball team, what type of adjustments we can make on the fly as well. Okay. Well, we appreciate the time, Coach. Uh, again, you'll catch more of the Jaguars on TV, on Cox, as well as on the news, and, of course, here at the Roman Banks Show. So stay tuned for more with Southern University Basketball and Coach Roman Banks. I'm here with Traylon Banks, freshman from Scotlandville. Traylon is fresh off a state championship with the Scotlandville Hornets. Traylon, talk to us about what it is to move from high school to the collegiate level and play basketball. Uh, it's basically just the speed of the game. The speed of the game is 10 times faster than high school because high school, I was a lot bigger than a lot of people, a lot bigger than a lot of guards. So I get to college, the height, the size, the strength, all that increases by 10. 10 times 10, so it just, uh, just the whole game just changes. Tonight, you started against Gramlin. Freshman, you came in, you were getting a lot of playing time. Uh, is this your first time starting? And what did you do to move into the starting lineup? No, nah, no, nah. actually, I've been starting since, I want to say, almost since the La Tech game. Okay. So I've been starting for about a good month and a half now. Uh, I, was, I was starting at the one. Uh, when Sebo Heider got hurt, then young Darius Johnson got hurt, so he moved me in the lineup at the two, and Christopher Heider came back. So I've been starting for a pretty good bit now. And, yeah. and so I'm just, so that's, getting a lot of playing time is basically uh, the usual for me, so that's, that's really not a big deal. Okay, great. Traylon, in high school you played for your uncle, uh, Carlos Sample. Now you're playing for your dad. How is it to play for your father? Is it a little harder on you than the other guys? Do you have to set an example? Tell us what it means to uh, play for your father. Uh, he's going to be a little harder, of course, because he's my father. But actually, it's, it's basically the same. He treat me just like he treat everybody else. He treat everybody else just like he treat me. He, he treat everybody like a son, basically. But uh, playing for my uncle, it, it probably was a little harder playing for my uncle than playing for Pops. But it's cool. It's, basically, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool playing for Pops. Traylon, you could have gone to a couple of different schools. You had a couple of offers. What made you come to Southern? Uh, tradition. Uh, my grandpa, my grandpa played here. He was on the '64 championship team. My uncle played here. I was Carlo Sample. My dad coached here also. So it was just a lot of tradition based on with family, and, it, and I just wanted to play for my pops. 
Thanks for the time, Traylon. Good luck with the rest of the season. Thank you. We're here with Malcolm Miller, number 33 for the Jaguars. Malcolm, last year you had a great season. Many people didn't think you'd come back. What made you come back to the Jaguars this year? Um, I just know that my team needed me, and I just wanted to get better as well and then show people, show people I can do other things besides shoot. So I just wanted to come back and help my team get another championship. Malcolm, you were the SWAC preseason player of the year. Talk about the pressure it is to be named the player of the year. Oh, it's a lot of pressure because you got you know that every game you're the player to watch. So you got to learn how to deal with it and prepare yourself each and every day and stay focused. If not, it's going to be a little bit tough on you. Malcolm, what are some of the things that you're going to be working on to make the team better this year? Um, I feel like I just need to rebound the ball more and try to just help my team stay intense on defense, talk more on defense, and do other things like get blocks and steals and the deflections, and also not just shoot the ball, try to attack the goal and find my players as well, because I know I'm a player to watch, and I'm going to get double team, and people are going to help on me a lot. So I just know that i got to find my teammates and just play smarter. All right. Well, good luck with the season. Thank you, sir. I'm here now with Trey Lynch. Trey is um, new to the team this year. Yes, sir. Trey, it looks like you've taken uh, Derek Beltran's role as the uh, two-guard shooter, scrappy defender. Talk about your role with the Jaguars. Uh, my role is, you know, uh, Coach Banks gave me the role to be a shooter, shoot when I'm open, and just take advantage of uh, the defense when they, give me, when they give it to me. Trey, where are you from? I'm from Lancaster, Texas, so Dallas slash Lancaster. So. Okay, Trey, you're a redshirt senior. Uh, what school are you coming from? I'm coming from Lamar University. I set out last year, you know, so obviously I'm playing this year and hopefully I have a ne another year to play next year. Okay. Talk to us, Trey, about some of the things that the Jaguars need to do to get better and compete for the SWAC championship this year. Stay focused, finish games, uh, come out with intensity from the beginning to the end, and just uh, stay disciplined. If we do those, we'll be all right. All right. Thank you, Trey. Keep okay. shooting the rock. Yes, sir. I'm here tonight with Calvin Godfrey. The Jaguars have just beaten the Jackson State Tigers 60 to 38. Calvin hails from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Calvin, I know you're happy to be out of that cold and that snow, but what brings you to Baton Rouge other than basketball? How'd you find out about Southern University? Um, well, when everything happened last summer with, with LSU, uh, Coach Jones put me in contact with Coach Banks, and I've been bonded with him ever since. So. I knew that he'd be a, a hard instructor for me, and I knew he'd be a great teacher for me in the long run. Okay, so you're a transfer from LSU? No, not LSU. I was a transfer from Majuco. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Calvin had 14 points tonight. Calvin, Jackson State uh, started out okay, and then you guys kind of separated, and it really wasn't a game as the game went on. Did y'all expect them to be as weak as they were? Um, 
I wouldn't say they were weak. They're a good basketball team. It's a good program. Um, they get coached similarly, similarly to the way that we do. And uh, I don't, the, the, we just knew we had to keep the pressure on them in order to expand our lead that we had in the first half. Calvin, um, Jaguars 4-0. You guys are heading toward the, the midway point. What do the Jaguars have to do to keep up this pace and to continue with the uh, wins? Um, we just got to stay a team, keep working with each other on offense as well as defense, and especially on defense. At the end of the day, we, we pride ourselves on our defense, and we know that as long as we continue to get stops, we, our offense will come. All right. Well, thank you for your time, and we'll see you again on the Roman Bank Show. All right. We're now here with Yondarius Johnson. Yondarius hails from Plain Dealing, Louisiana, up in North Louisiana, where they play a lot of basketball. Uh, Yondarius, tonight you went four and four against the Jackson State Tigers. The Tigers, they're, they're a real good team. They're just young, but I can tell they coach, coach them real well. And me going four and four, you know, I couldn't get going at all, but luckily my teammates, you know what I'm saying, they picked me up. They kept me going to my keep, keep going with it, keep coming with it, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna, you're gonna, you're going to start to feel it. And we got, we got the uh, W, you know what I'm saying? I can't ask for more. That's really what it's all about, the W. Yandarius is one of the leading scorers for the Jaguars, and he's also one of the leading energy guys. Yandarius, talk to us about what it's going to take to keep the Jaguars in the win column. Just, you know, coach prepare us so well, you know what I'm saying, for each game. On, like, we watch film almost every day on each team. We break it down every, every day. We practice, you know what I'm saying, just for them team when we play them. Coach prepare he, like I said, he prepared well for each team. We just got to play smart, play together, play with a lot of energy, and we're going to get, get the W, like, like tonight. Young Darius, offense or defense, what do you enjoy playing more? Uh, defense. You know, just stopping the other player, the lead score. I'm always on the lead score, so just stopping him. You know, that, you know what I'm saying? That, I know my teammates, they, they what they want me to do. If I have to score points, I will. But, you know what I'm saying, they're playing defense. You know what I'm saying? They get me going. All right. Well, there you have it. A coach's dream, somebody who wants to play defense instead of offense. We appreciate your time. We'll see you another time on the Roman Banks Show. I'm here with Coach Roman Banks after the Jackson State game. The Jaguars beat the J-State Tigers tonight 60-36. to A great fourth win for you, Coach. You're 4-0 in the SWAC. Did you expect the Tigers to be as, I won't call them weak, I called them weak with one of your players early. He told me they were a good team. But did you expect them to be as soft as they were? No, actually, uh, you know, the, I don't think they were very soft. I think we just wore them down. Okay. I thought the first half they really competed. Uh, he got a, a group of young guys. He got about three seniors out there that kind of lead them. And I think that we was able to wear them down. And, uh, you know, we was able to bring some guys off the bench and continue to wear them down and keep the pressure on them all the time. And I think they ran out of gas. And then once we started rebounding the basketball, that I think we didn't do a very good job of finishing possessions defensively in the first half. And we came out the second half and we stopped them, got the rebounds, they would get some runouts. I think it took a lot of air out of them. Coach, I noticed tonight most coaches have a rotation of about seven or eight. You're going almost 10 deep with your rotation. Is that the Roman Banks plan to really get everybody involved and to also wear teams down? Yeah, I, I think we have a group of guys that we could do that with. Uh, you know, we have all eight and then we know all 10 and, and, and 11 men that we'll play when we're rotating them in. So we got some guys that can contribute. And uh, as they learn, I wanted to do that early on, but now we, with injuries, everybody back, everybody played when we had injuries. So now people kind of know what's going on and we're able to put that together and get a little chemistry. Mm -hmm. And now it finds that our bench is a little longer because people had to play when someone was hurt and they're doing a good job. Coach, 4-0 in the SWAC. Did you think you'd be here? You know, I knew this team uh, was capable. Okay. Uh, you know, you just go to Texas and try to get a split and try to win at home. So, you know, I like where we are. Uh, still got a long way to go. It's, uh, we've got a challenging road trip ahead of us. And uh, we're going to go in and, and be ready to play uh, Pine Bluff first and see what we can do at Valley. All right, Coach. We'll see you next time on the Roman Bank Show.
I'm here with Malcolm Miller, shooting guard for the Jaguars. The Jaguars have just beaten the Mississippi Valley Delta Devils. Malcolm, you had the hot hand tonight. You had um, 21 points, eight boards, nine of 13. That's a pretty hot hand. Talk to us about what it's going to take to keep that hot hand for the rest of the season. Oh, my just got to come in the gym, put in work, not only when we in practicing, but outside of practice and come in here on my own time and get in my own work and just try to stay consistent as possible and work with my teammates. Malcolm, in addition to uh, shooting the ball that the Jaguars need from you, looks like they're going to need some ball handling from you because y'all are down a point guard and looks like one of your other guards got hurt. Yes, sir. Uh, our other guards got to step up. We know that uh, Sebo, one of our big, he was a big part of this team, and we only got two point guards, really, and if they get in foul trouble, then me and the other senior guard, Young Darius, got to step up, and the other guard, Trey Lynch, and Cameron Monroe, and we got to step up and handle the ball for us, try not to turn over the ball, because that's a big part for us. All right. What do you see going down the stretch? Um, I just see us getting better as a team, playing every game as hard as possible, and try to get this conference championship. All right. Good luck. We appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. All right. I'm here with junior forward Calvin Godfrey. He had a great night against the Delta Devils tonight. 13 points, 12 boards. Calvin, we won the Battle of the Boards tonight, a very important factor for the Jaguars win. Talk to us about what the Jaguars have got to do to get on the boards and stay on the boards hard for the rest of the season. Um, well, it's a, it's a battle of ours every time we step out there. We want to win the rebound awards. I mean, we have a big team in this conference, and we want to play like it every night. So. We at least have to know that we want to win every rebound and battle we get in. Calvin, you had another player go down tonight. This will be a second guy. Y'all have lost to injury. What does that do to your rotation, and how can the Jaguars continue to play strong less couple of players? Um, it hurts us. It, it, he was an integral part of our, our bench and our bench's production, and it's going to hurt us. But we fortunately, we have a team full of players. so. When he, for when one of us fall, the rest of us just step up in our areas where we know we should. And like today, Bryce came in and he did what he was supposed to. And we have players like that that can come off the bench and step in and play that play a more a larger role than they would necessarily if Dane was was still playing. Calvin, I noticed this year you've been a leader on the team. They need more of that leadership from you. Um, well, it's, it's still all getting new to me. I mean, I can't be a better leader, and at times I don't have leader, leader qualities, but I'm working on becoming a better leader because it, I can tell that the team wants me to be that leader. They want me to be able to sit and take criticism and, and brush it off and, and go to the next play. And, I know that instead of getting into a battle with my team on who they want me to be, it would be a lot easier for me to just be that leader and stay consistent. Well, there you have it, the developing leader, Calvin Godfrey. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. All right.
I'm here with Javon Mitchell from St. Martinville. Javon had his last game on the bluff as a senior on the Southern University Jaguar basketball court. Javon, talk to us about how it feels to be a senior in your last game on the yard. It felt pretty good. Just, it would have felt better if we got the win tonight, but it felt pretty good. I had all my family and friends out here, so it was pretty good. Nice environment. Uh, your feelings going into the SWAC tournament, what are your expectations of the tournament? I mean, we just come out, just we go play every game. We go play, we go play every game like we, like we, I saw last one and just come out and try to win the tournament. Okay. Javon, second SWAC championship in a row. Talk to us about how that feels to have the program going in the right direction. I mean, it feels pretty good. Coach Brains really work, work us hard and just, we just, just preparing to win championship after championship every year. Okay. All right, well, thank you, man. Good luck in the tournament. All right. I'm here with Yondarius Johnson, senior from Plain Dealing, Louisiana. Yondarius, last game on the bluff. You no, know, uh, we took good pride. You know, it, being a senior here, it's you know what I'm saying. We know the history of the program, and we want to come out and get the uh, the win tonight. You know, coach always talked to us about playing tough, playing smart, and we wanted to get that W. But you know what I'm saying, we came up short, let some players slip up. But you know what I'm saying, playing here it's been a blessing. You know. Cool. On Darius, second year as the swag champ. It feel good. All the work we put in, all the running, all that, it paid off both years. You know, Coach, he got a great system, and, you know, we felt like we played his system, and we played the way he wants to play, and um, we, we were going to win. So we did it two years in a row. You know, I'm proud, proud of my team, but tonight we came up short. Young Darius, you guys going into the uh, swag tournament, all you can play for is the swag championship. What are your thoughts about the SWAG tournament? Who you see as the Jaguars competition? Um, well, the SWAG, like, we feel like all the guys, you know what I'm saying, all the team, they're pretty good. You know, we can't sleep on nobody. We're going to play our game, and we're going to try to come up on top and win it again like last year. All right, good, good luck, young man. Thank you. We're here with Bryce Clark, senior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Bryce had his last game as a Jaguar tonight. Bryce, good game. Unfortunately, the Jaguars lost. What are your thoughts as the Jaguars get ready to go to the tournament? Um, my thoughts is um, ta um, taking this loss and heading into Houston and trying to get um, a SWAC championship and um, try to just play out the last games. Br uh, Bryce, your son is here. How old is he? He's six months. And what's his name? His name's Bryce as well. Hey, Bryce. Want to say something? That's Bryce Clark Jr. Look out for him in 20 years, Jaguar fans. Bryce. Senior night, last game on the, on the bluff. Um, it felt good. Um, out of all my years of basketball, playing for Coach Banks in Southern, I mean, it's, it's, it's like a real family out of all my years. You know, going to the house, having lunch on Christmas and all that, and it's good to come out on senior night and play and give it all, even though we lost it, in order to teach us a lesson. And hopefully as a family, we'll go and we won't lose our last game. Bryce, two years as a SWAG champ. How does it feel to be SWAC champs twice? It feels great to be SWAC champs twice. Yeah, but um, we're trying to, as Coach Brink said, it, it's, it's been a long time since Southern had won the regular season and the SWAC tournament in the same year. So that's what we're trying to do. And um, we know the, 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 past, the past Southern players before us, and we've been doing it for them too as well. All right. Well, good luck in the tournament. Good luck in the future. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. All right. I'm here with Coach Roman Banks. Tough loss tonight to the Texas Southern Tigers. But the Jaguars go into the SWAC tournament as the SWAC champions. How does it feel to be two-time SWAC champion? Well, you know, after a loss, it don't feel very good. <laughs> but uh, I'm very happy for those guys in the locker room. After all that adversity they went through this year, uh, to turn out to be uh, champions of this league, that's what we work for. And uh, we wanted to go out and represent our student body, alumni, and administration very well, and they did that. Going into the SWAC tournament, you got a fresh season. It's a four-game season or so. Your thoughts and your forecast for the tournament? Well, you know, my concern is energy. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we know we're going to the conference tournament, but then we know that's just it. And a lot of guys have more to fight for. I thought tonight was indicative of that, what I've been trying to pull out those guys. They were really fighting to uh, get second seed, and they played with a little bit more pop than I thought that we did. So at the end of the day, we have to go into this tournament focus and uh, not think about that we have nothing to play for and just think about winning this tournament. Coach, got to ask you about NCAA decision to prohibit you guys from playing in the NCAA tournament after a great showing last year. What are what is Roman Banks' feelings about that situation and can it be fixed? Well, you know, I just think it's a sad occasion. You know, usually, you know, 
if we were in a situation APR-wise and we wasn't doing our job as a program, it will be different. But when you're relying on people to do their job, especially grown -up people that's got positions and, uh, and not organized enough to do the job and they end up hurting student athletes and students, then I think it's a problem. Uh, I don't know where the problem lies. Obviously, our administration is on ahead of that. And, uh, you know, it's a sad day uh, to not give your student athlete the best chance that they can have when they play in sports for you. Great answer, Coach. Coach, on a lighter note, your players. They gave you some good years, two championships. Talk to us about your fourth. Well, no question about it. You know, that was our first recruiting class. Malcolm Miller has really been awesome for us the last two years. He'll probably be another first-team candidate. Javon Mitchell and his family really is uh, embedded into our basketball program. Um, they're around us all the time. The kids, uh, they treat everybody like family. And uh, I really have a special relationship with those uh, wonderful people, and we're going to miss them dearly and Javon as well. Young Darius come in and um, his senior year has really gone to another level. Sure. And anytime you, you can see um, young guys improving as men and as students, you're happy about it. And then Bryce Clark, right now, I think he's finally putting it all together. He transferred in, he's a, uh, a grad school student playing for us right now. And to see where he's come from as growing and learning to be able to contribute to this team. You know, at the end of the day, you, it's just like being a parent. Whenever you see improvement, whenever you see growth, you're happy, and I'm pleased for all these seniors. Last question, Coach. Special year for you. You had a chance to coach your son, Traylon Banks. Uh, he ended up earning a starting spot on your team. Talk to us about uh, your son as a player and your son. Well, you know, for so long being a coach and you never been, be around your kids like you like to, and for to get the opportunity for him, for me to coach him and, and for him to be around finally after several years now, uh, uh, it's a great feeling and uh, also it's a testament to him how he handles my coaching uh, he fit in with the guys well uh, and, and, and he's no big eye little you he's been wonderful at that uh, and the guys think I get on him a little bit too much sometimes but he's actually helped our basketball team tremendously you know we want to continue to recruit student athletes like him pretty good in the classroom and good basketball players and uh, we have several more on the way and uh, we are pretty happy about it as a basketball staff good basketball players good students you heard it from the coach he's looking for you coach thank you for the time good luck in the tournament Thanks a lot. We need it. Okay. All right. All right, man.